Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Buyant Muyantiat Surayaha Tene Brahma Hudaya Adikavaye Muyantija Surayaha Tejo Varimadam Yatabini Mayo Yatra Trisargo Mesha Tejo Varimadam Yatabini Mayo Damna Sreena Sadani Rasta Kuvakam Satyam Param Dimayi Damna Sreena Sadani Rasta Kuvakam Satyam Param Dimayi O my Lord Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O my Lord Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality of Godhead. O all pervading personality of Godhead. O for my respectful obeisances unto you. O for my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation sustenance and destruction of manifested universes. The creation, sustenance, and destruction of manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge into the heart of Brahmachi. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge into the heart of Brahmachi. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on fire and land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitravotra. Paramo nirmatsananam satam. Vedyam vastava matra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shimad bhagavate mahamuni krite. Kimva parir ishwaraha. Sadyo hridi avarudyate tra. Priti bihi susu subhistakshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam, compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity, is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpatur galitam falam. Sukumukad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur aho rasika puvi bhavu kaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of the desire tree of the Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Even though its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Even though its nectarian juice was already relishable for all including liberated souls. Including liberated 
Shinvatam Swakata Krishna Shinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Punya Shravana Kirtana Vidyam Taksto Bhadrani Vidyam Taksto Bhadrani Vidu Nati Suhit Satam Vidu Nati Suhit To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear about him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, I'm sorry. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best-wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta Prayesu Bhadresu Nasta Prayesu Bhadresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naistiki In this way a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. A devotee actually develops his dormant natural dormant his dormant transcendental knowledge. Dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. From Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the devotional service. Tadarajas Tamo Bhavo. Kamalu Bhadayas Chaye Kamalu Bhadayas Chaye Chaitaya Tare Navidam Stitvam Sattve Prasidati By development of devotional service one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance and thus material loss and avarice are diminished and thus material loss and avarice Evam prasana manaso Evam prasana manaso Bhagavat bhakti yogataha Bhagavat bhakti yogataha Bhagavat tattva vijnana Bhagavat tattva vijnana Mukta sanga sijayate Mukta sanga sijayate When these impurities are wiped away When these impurities are wiped away The candidate remains steady The candidate remains steady In his position of pure goodness Becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis, chidyante sarvasamsaya, shiyante chasya karmani, drista evatmanishwari. Thus, Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram, understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 13, Verse Number 56. Dvasta Maya Gunodarko Niruda Karanasaya Nivarti Tak Kilahara Aste Stanur Ivachala Astesanu Ivachala Tasyan Tarayo Maivabu Tasyan Tarayo Maivabu Sanyas Takila Karmanaha Sanyas Takila Karmanaha Translation by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada He will have to suspend all the actions of the senses, even from the outside, and will have to be impervious to interactions of the senses, which are influenced 
by the material nature. After renouncing all material duties, he must become immovably established beyond all sources of hindrances on the path. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Dhritarashtra had attained by the yogic process, the stage of negation of all sorts of material reaction. The effects of the material modes of nature draw the victim to indefatigable desires of enjoying matter. Indefatigable means there's, there's no fatigue. They never get tired of nonsense. But one can escape such false enjoyment by the yogic process. Every sense is always busy in search for its food, and thus the conditioned soul is assaulted from all sides and has no chance to become steady in any pursuit. Maharaj Yudhisthira was advised by Narada not to disturb his uncle by attempting to bring him back home. He was now beyond the attraction of anything material. The material modes of nature, the gunas, have their different modes of activities. But above the material modes of nature is a spiritual mode, which is absolute. Nirguna means without reaction. The spiritual mode and its effect are identical. Therefore, the spiritual quality is distinguished from its material counterpart by the word nirguna. After complete suspension of the material modes of nature, one is admitted to the spiritual sphere. The action dictated by the spiritual modes is called devotional service, or bhakti. Bhakti is therefore nirguna, attained by direct contact with the Absolute. Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Well, this is a very profound explanation so, uh, the, the point that is amazing here, it says, the spiritual mode and its effect are identical. So, that means that the material mode and its and effect are not identical. Okay, what does that mean exactly? That is, that when one is serving Krishna without any material motive, and is no longer attracted to sense gratification, then there's no more karmic reaction. In other words, when a person engages in sense gratification, what happens? They become entangled by karma. So the karma is misery, and a sense gratification is supposed to be ecstasy. But in Krishna consciousness, when there's no material desire other than, and the only desire is to please Krishna, then the activity is ecstasy and the result of the activity is ecstasy. So they are the same. Both are ecstatic. Whereas when one engages in sense gratification, the activity seems to be ecstasy, but the reaction is misery. Now, this is explained also in the Bhagavad Gita in a little bit different language, but the same meaning is there in the fifth chapter in the purport to uh, verse number 22. The more one is addicted to material pleasures, the more he is entrapped by material miseries. So that's basically explaining why the uh, uh, it says here there's a diff that if in the spiritual atmosphere. Oh, sorry, I'm looking in the wrong place. Yeah, in the spiritual atmosphere, 
the spiritual mode and its effect are identical. However, on the material platform, the uh, material mode and its effect are not identical. In the material mode of passion, one enjoys sense gratification. Right? Therefore, it says, the more one is addicted to material pleasures, the more one is entrapped by material miseries. So the reaction to the sense gratification is misery. So it's different. Whereas the spiritual mode and its effect are identical. Both are ecstatic. So that's a very important point. And when one uh, attains this stage that Dhritarashtra has attained by the yogic process, the stage of negation of all sorts of material reaction. Why? Because one has given up all sorts of material pleasures. The effects of the material modes of nature draw the victim to indefatigable desires for enjoying mass. So when one is under the influence of the modes, goodness, passion, and ignorance, they have unending desires for enjoying matter. Then Prabhupada says, but one can escape such false enjoyment by the yogic process. So now why does it say false enjoyment? Well, because it's a negative enjoyment. What does that mean? Let's say there's a man who goes into a, a, a discount shoe store. There's one, uh, I forget the name now, but uh, they have the same model of shoes in different sizes. So they have eight and a half, nine, nine and a half, ten, ten and a half, eleven, eleven and a half, twelve, twelve and a half, thirteen sizes of shoes. But in each category, they have exactly the same model. So this man was a uh, ten and a half. But it so happened that the day he went into the shoe store, the model he wanted was in eight. But his size is ten and a half. And they didn't have it in the ten and a half. They were out of stock. So he asked the lady, he said, when are you going to get it in? I want this model here. And she said, oh, well, the next delivery is two weeks from now. He said, I can't wait that long. He said, well, sorry, sir, can't help you. So he was really upset. But he decided, because of, of vanity, that he would buy the eight size. So he buys size eight, and he sort of squeezes his foot into it and takes off his regular ten and a half shoes and, and uh, puts them in the box that the eight was in, and then he walks out with the shoes that are too small for his feet. So all day long he walks around showing off his new shoes and he really likes their style. But it's really pinching his feet. And by the end of the day he's got a big headache. And when he goes home, the first thing he does is take off his shoe like this. He goes, ah, that feels good. Now, is it actually good? Is that pleasure that he's feeling, is that actually a positive pleasure? pleasure? No. It's simply a relief from suffering that he's calling happiness, that he says is good. You see? So actually, the happiness that we enjoy in the material world is simply, it's not real happiness. It's simply relief from suffering. You see? Real happiness there's no suffering involved in it. No, there's no duality. In other words, there's this famous uh, English poet. Uh, uh, I'll think of his name. Anyway, Byron, yeah. Uh, his name is Byron. So anyway, he wrote a poem and he said that in, do in order to enjoy the coolness of wine, one should first eat a chili. 
<laughs> you actually write a poem like that. <laughs> so uh, by eating a chili, you know, your, your mouth gets inflamed, you know, so then when you te taste some uh, chilled wine, it gives you a, a sense of pleasure, see? <laughs> so it's the same thing. What they call happiness in the material, what we call happiness in the material world is simply temporary uh, relief from suffering. It's not actually positive happiness. You see. So, uh, therefore, it says, uh, the living being, by his desiring to lord it over material world, no, I'm sorry, again, I'm in the wrong page. page. It says that uh, this, this, Dhritarashtra attains the stage of negation of all sorts of material reaction. Well, that's a positive thing. It sounds like a negative thing, a negation. But you're negating uh, karmic activity. So there's three types of karma. There's karma, vikarma, and akarma. So materialistic people are in the le level of karma and vikarma. That is, karmic actions. That Karma means action. That's the generic term meaning of it. But there's also another meaning of karma in the sense that one follows the Vedic uh, rules and regulations to attain limited sense gratification as a palliative so that one will eventually lose the desire for sense gratification. Okay? So that is cool. That's, so that's also called karma. But it's action, pious action, based on Vedic uh, injunctions, but with attachment to sense gratification. And then vikarma is acting against the Vedic instructions, and that's basically called sinful activity. And akarma is almost the same as karma. However, there's no attachment to sense gratification. One performs the action only to please Krishna. So there's three types of karma. Karma, vikarma, and akarma. So the, at the stage of negation of all sorts of material reaction, it's actually a positive thing, although the word is negative, negation. You're giving up all kinds of karma for sense gratification. Even the Vedic injunctions, uh, karmakanda section, where it's permitting limited sense gratification by, by certain ritual activities, that's also given up. So that's the difference between following the rules of regulations of the Vedas in the mode of goodness and following the rules and regulations transcendental to the mode of goodness or in, in uh, Visuddha Sattva, stage, transcendental goodness. When there's no attachment to sense gratification, one is only acting for the pleasure of Krishna. So if we act under the, under the influence of the modes of material nature, then we engage in this false enjoyment because the background of it is actually suffering. Like for example, have you ever seen a baby that's born laughing? They're always crying, right? And then the mother goes, oh, goochie, goochie, goo, and breastfeeds the baby. All of a sudden, the baby stops crying and then smiles a little bit. So that smile is actually relief from the misery. It's not actually positive pleasure, you see. So right from the beginning of life, we see that we're born into misery. Yeah. The baby in the womb is miserable. They're all cooped up and, and squeezed. And then the mother sometimes uh, goes to Disneyland and gets on a roller coaster, you know, and the baby's going, what's going on here? I can't, I, I'm, I'm afraid, right? And then the mother eats some spicy uh, salsa. And all of a sudden, the salsa is burning the body of the baby. So the whole thing, and then... Sometimes the mother eats meat, and some rotten type of meat, and then not cooked properly or whatever, and then, then the worms in the meat are biting the baby's body. So the whole 
experience in the womb is miserable. That's why the baby is like this, praying, please, Krishna, I know I forgot you in the last life, and I engaged in sense gratification. I promise you this time, you get me out of here, I'm going to be your devotee. So you, can look, you can see the baby is like this in a praying position, the, the uh, embryo. However, as soon as they get out, all the Gucci, Gucci goos and everything, they forget. And they feel, oh, now everything is TK, TK, happy. But no, it's not happy. So all throughout life, we are calling the temporary relief of misery happiness. But it's not really happiness. So therefore, Maharaj Yudhisthira is advised by Narada, Narada. He said, don't disturb your uncle by attempting to bring him back. He's now beyond the attraction of anything material. Just like there's a famous uh, prayer by Yamunacharya, which, uh, by the way, the, the, uh, some of the uh, Sri Vaishnavas reject that Yamunacharya ever said this prayer, but we know that they did. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur has... Uh, verified it. So our authority is not the uh, Shri Vaishnava Acharyas. Our authority is Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and the Vaishnava Acharyas. So, anyway, uh, Yamunacharya says, let me just get the exact 152. Uh, he says, he says, uh, as illustrated in the above mentioned verse of Sri Yamuna Acharya, a sincere devotee of the Lord shuns all material sense enjoyment due to his higher taste for spiritual enjoyment in the association of the Lord. That is the secret of success. So Yamunacharya is basically in this verse, he says that whenever I think of uh, sex pleasure, I spit on it. Prabhupada says, I spite on it. Right. So, <laughs> but actually, uh, if you would, I mean, if you ever uh, uh, ask a person well, most people say, oh, that's my best pleasure in life, right? I'll tell you a funny story. When I was in France, yeah, it's, it's the verse says, Yad avadi, avadi mama chete krishna padara vinde nava nava rasa dhamani udyatam rantum asit tad avadi bata nari sangame smaryamane bhavati mukha vikara Shustu Nishtivanamcha. Since my mind has been engaged in the service of the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, and I have been enjoying an ever new transcendental humor, whenever I think of sex life with a woman, my face at once turns from it, and I spit at the thought. There you are. See? And Prabhupada says, Krishna consciousness is such a transcendentally nice thing that automatically material enjoyment becomes distasteful. It is as if a hungry man had satisfied his hunger by a sufficient quantity of nutritious eatables. Maharaj Ambarish also conquered a great yogi, Durvasamuni, simply because his mind was engaged in Krishna consciousness. So, this uh, seeing material enjoyment as distasteful, that's actually a blessing. So, Prabhupada, in a letter, says, that because of Maya, people think sex is good. Because of Maya, because of illusion. So, uh, this is completely against everything that's uh, so-called said and purported as as the highest pleasure in life uh, in the material world. 
This is a completely opposite point of view. People would say, this is crazy. I can't believe this. If I believe this, I won't be happy in this life. But the opposite is exactly true. As long as they engage in that type of activity, they're, su they're attacked by misery. As this verse that we read, as, as this purport, Prabhupada's purport, he says, the more one is addicted to material pleasures, the more he's entrapped by material miseries. This is a law of nature, like the law of gravity. Who, who accepts this? You know, if you, t if you explain this to a 16-year-old kid or a 24-year-old uh, adult, they would say, oh, I don't want to hear this philosophy. I don't want to hear it. Why? Because then they can't, they have to give up sense gratification. And everything they're doing is to attain sense gratification and, and make it sustainable, you see. And it's not sustainable. It just leads to misery. So there's so many examples, I'm not going to go through them. So anyway, this is very interesting to see uh, what's happening to uh, Dhritarashtra. He, 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 he attains this state of near guna uh, because he's lost his attraction to material sense gratification. His wife is with him, but he's ignoring her. She's also doing the same thing, losing all attachment to sense gratification, just meditating uh, on, on Krishna. So this is a transcendental position. So we see, for example, Vasudeva and Devaki, before they attained the position to have Krishna as their child, they meditated together for 12,000 years. Did you know that? Did you know that? You've read that? Yeah. Yeah. 12,000 years they meditated together on having Krishna as their child. You see? So this is something that people can actually do. That is spend a lifetime in Krishna consciousness and not be engaged in sense gratification. Although taking prasadam, bathing regularly, it is also pleasing to the senses, but you're doing it as a matter of duty to serve the Lord, not for personal enjoyment. So, to understand the difference, like materialists are also eating food, they're also bathing, they're going to the sauna, and they're getting massages, and you know, uh, but that is sense gratification. Whereas, acting out of duty, in order to serve the deities properly, one bathes two, three times a day, one puts on clean clothes, and one respects Mahaprasadam. Uh, but the, the purpose there is not one's personal sense gratification, or as we say, self-indulgence, but it is to, to serve the Lord. So, finally, after complete suspension of the material mode of modes of nature, one is admitted to the spiritual sphere. An action dictated by the spiritual modes is called devotional service. So why does he use the word dictated? Because in the material consciousness, the modes of material nature are dictating what we're going to do. But in the spiritual state, above the influence of the modes of material nature, now Krishna is dictating by the spiritual modes and that's called devotional service or bhakti. Bhakti is therefore nirguna attained by direct contact with the absolute. So this word dictate is very important. If we look in the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita verse number six it says Okay, I'm sorry. Verse number seven. Jita manak prasantasya paramatma samahita shitosna sukaduke su tata manapamanayo. For one who has conquered the mind, the super soul is already reached, for he has attained tranquility. 
to such a man, happiness and distress, heat and cold, honor and dishonor are all the same. Now, the purport, Prabhupada says, actually, every living entity is intended to is intended to abide by the dictation, point one, right, of the Supreme Personality Godhead, who is seated in everyone's heart as Paramatma. When the mind is misled by the external illusory energy, one becomes entangled in material activities. Therefore, as soon as one's mind is controlled through one of the yoga systems, one should be considered to have already reached the destination. One has to abide by the superior dictation, point number two. When one's mind is fixed on a superior nature, he has no alternative but to follow the dictation, three, of the supreme. The mind must admit some superior dictation, number four, and follow it. The effect of controlling the mind is that one automatically follows the dictation, five, of the paramatma or supersoul. Because of this transcendental position, because this transcendental position is at once achieved by one who is in Krishna consciousness, the devotee of the Lord is unaffected by the dualities of material existence, namely distress and happiness, cold and heat, etc. This is practical samadhi or absorption in the Supreme. So in this short paragraph, he mentioned the word dictation five times. So, what is dictation? In that, this sense, in this uh, context, it's the Lord's instructions of things that we should do every day. And there are things that we shouldn't do every day. So this, this is the Lord's dictation. And he says here, After complete suspension of the material modes of nature, one is admitted to the spiritual sphere and action dictated by the superior modes is called devotional service or bhakti. Bhakti is therefore near guna attained by direct contact with the absolute. So this dictation in the spiritual mode is called devotional service. The rules and regulations that we follow and when we attain pure love of Krishna, we surpass the rules and regulations out of love for Krishna. But we should not try and jump to that position artificially. We should always follow sadhana bhakti. And when Prabhupada or our guru is satisfied that we've attained the stage of nirguna, then uh, one is put under the training of one of the gopis and learns all the arts of pure love and devotion to Krishna. That's a trans completely transcendental position. Okay, we'll stop right there. Are there any questions? Yeah. I believe that all kind of so all sorts of uh, material pleasure, enjoyment are ramifications of sex life. Right? I mean that the main pleasure. Well, okay, let's say you want to buy some really nice clothes, some designer clothes. They're very expensive. Right? Why is that? Well, you want to attract. You want to buy a really nice car, right? A Porsche or something like that. Or, or a Lamborghini, which is not a type of, of pasta. So, you know, it's all for attraction, you know, to attract uh, the opposite sex. You know, or you want to buy some nice jewelry. Or you want to have a really nice house. It's all all connected. Yeah. Okay, I agree with you. So now, why this um, sexual impetus, sexual uh, enjoyment, pleasure is is the is the most desirable in, in the material world? Is the highest? I mean, say it is considered to be the highest pleasure. Yes. Why is it so? Because it's coming from Krishna. Everything starts from Krishna. All right? You see, the difference is that pleasure experienced in the spiritual world is in the spiritual body, not a material body. So it's, it's something unimaginable to us. We experience 
the so-called sense gratification through the material body, and it's a gross thing. Like, what is a material body? It's a walking sewer. You say, you know, right in here we have a sewer. Right, it's full of bad smells and putrefying things and and so forth. Right, every day we're passing stool and urine. Right, and. Uh, you don't like say, oh, no, 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 I don't want to lose that stool, you know, and you sort of pick it up out of the toilet, you know, and rub it on your hands. That, that's me. No, no, it's not me. It's a disgusting thing, see? And, and that's, the body is, is like that. It's disgusting, actually. Yeah. But the spiritual body is all transcendental, satchitananda vigraha. So the experience of, of pleasure in the spiritual world it's something unimaginable to us. We don't understand what it's like. Like, for example, when the gopis see uh, certain postures of Krishna or his uh, eyebrows move or something like that, it causes them ecstasy. Now, when you see something like that, or I see something like that, uh, okay, you know, it's, it's, uh, there's emotive. Like, if you ever, if you ever watch silent movies, they were not speaking in the silent movies, right? So th what they were doing, they were expressing it with, you know, eyebrows and different types of looks and postures and, and things like that. And you, you understand what's going on, even though they're not speaking, by those, those uh, movements of the eyes, you know, movements of the body. Bond bondly expression. They're bodily expressions. But in the spiritual world, in the spiritual body, those types of movements cause extreme ecstasy. That we, we don't, you know, we only have a hint of it here. There it's unbelievable. So uh, the material body uh, is the place where we're experiencing the sense gratification, right? But the material body is a walking sewer. So it's, it's not really uh, a pleasurable uh, medium. It, it's, it's based on, and, and you know, like, and I don't want to go through gross examples, but there are many gross examples of people engaging in sense gratification and suffering. Not, not getting a reaction, the act itself is suffering. So, so if you analyze things correctly, you'll see why go there. It's much better to stay on the spiritual path. You avoid all that unnecessary suffering. And, and the happiness that you feel in the material body is not actually positive. It's a negative happiness. It's just a temporary relief from suffering, as we said. It's not real happiness. It takes some time to understand this, you know. I mean, it's. See, this is the problem with people because they can never imagine enjoying the spiritual body, you know, where the gross enjoyment is material body, as I described it nicely. And then people, what makes people pes, pes, what's, say, pessimistic? Pessimistic, yeah. They can imagine now, well, besides this, there's a, and that enjoyment, which is spiritual, they can't they can realize. Well, that's why it says, uh, <laughs> there's a very nice verse in Bhagavad Gita, 8th chapter. It says, uh, let me just find it. Parastasma tu bhavo nyo vyaktu vyakta sanatana yasa sarve subhute su nasatsu na vinasyati. Yet there is another unmanifest nature which is eternal and is transcendental to this manifested and unmanifested matter. It is supreme and is never annihilated. When all in this world is annihilated, that part remains as it is. And Prabhupada says, Krishna's superior spiritual energy is transcendental and eternal. It is beyond all the changes of material nature, which is manifest and annihilated during the days and nights of Brahma. Krishna's superior energy is completely opposite in quality to material nature. Superior and inferior nature are explained in the seventh chapter. So, you see, there is this other 
reality. And people just ignore it. Yeah, the, I don't know, people probably they don't have the patience to wait until they experience it. You know, it, it's inconceivable. Everybody wants the Shreya and prayer. Exactly. The, they want the prayer. They want the immediate gratification, not the long-term right. good. See? So, uh, therefore, just like someone who's studying to pass an exam, so somebody else comes and says, hey, you know, let's smoke a little marijuana, you know, and uh, sort of relax a little bit. And the person says, no, I don't want to do that. So, no, come on, let's, let's have fun. You know, say, no, I don't want to. I want to study for this test. So the other guy smokes the marijuana and flunks the test, and the one that accepts controlling his senses passes the test, you see? So you have to decide, you want the short-term uh, happiness or you want the long-term uh, goal. So the devotees are concerned with Shreya, long-term. I think, I think we should emphasize on this, actually, for young people, about Shreya and prayer, it's very important. Yes. Yeah. Should, should, should be remind, reminded all the time. Prabhupada talks about it. Mm. Well, I mean, the, see, self-discipline is something that's being lost nowadays. You know? Or if there is any self-discipline, it's for sense gratification. It's not for uh, a spiritual goal. So self-discipline self for sense gratification is also nonsense. So everything can be good or bad. It depends what the goal is. Everything depends on the motive. Okay, we'll stop right there. I'll go to Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hari Bol.